All right. Today is Monday, May 4th, 2009. And the purpose of this video is to, once again, offer more proof of how much damage the 1970s women's liberation movement has done to the black family and the black community. And namely, it has destroyed the institution of the family, the definition of family, the definition of gender, and here in 2009, after 40 years of feminism, gender roles are have been obliterated. And this, of course, is typified by the gay marriage phenomena that is in the news every day. And in the last few videos that I've done, I've mentioned that I was blessed to have had a strong black father growing up in the 1960s. And of course, this was because during that time, the authority and the importance of a father was all around us. It was an institution and a boy who didn't have a father was called a mama's boy. And that was the worst thing a boy could be called. I saw this with my own eyes. I saw this with my own eyes. A boy by the name of Tony, who was a what you could call a bad boy, from uh, uh, the the uh, the adjacent block of where I lived, he used to come on our block to you know play with our toys. And I remember somebody asked him, uh, "Where are your toys? Why don't you go on your block?" where you live and he said something back and, to, and this is an adult talking to him and you know there's an exchange and uh, you know a verbal exchange and then the man who was sitting on the porch told Tony this this young boy says don't you have a father to buy you some toys and he said he was a mama's boy he talked about he was a mama's boy and that he didn't have a father and Tony who was somewhat of a thug, but he started crying. And he never came on our block anymore. He stopped coming around. He and his cousin, they stopped coming on our block. I saw this with my own eyes. He was called a mama's boy and reminded that he didn't have anybody to buy him toys. Because he used to come on our block and make it seem like that we were children or babies because we played with toys. Of course we were children. Huh? So I saw all of this. Another thing that you all should recognize and realize that helps you understand how much of an institution fatherhood was is a TV show that's still on television today in 2009, and that is The Andy Griffin Show. The Andy Griffin Show is a very good example of what the TV shows were like Okay, what the TV shows were like in the 1960s and, of course, the 1950s. The Andy Griffin show about this white man who is the sheriff of uh, Mayberry and how he's got to constantly wrestle to keep control and he's got to deal with all of these people who, in many ways, don't have any damn sense. Weak being. And of course, Barney Fife was the consummate, confused, weak man. But Andy Griffith had to be the man in charge. And of course, he was the consummate father. He was constantly uh, showing wisdom. No one else had the wisdom that Andy Griffith, Sheriff Taylor, had. And there were other shows during the 1960s that were just like that. Yet the feminists hated this. The feminists hated the idea that all of these white men had all the answers to every damn thing. You see, feminists hated Sheriff Andy Taylor. The feminists hate Ain't B. Huh? Who remembers Ain't B and how she was just a consummate doting woman, always seeking to comfort everybody? Huh? She was obviously always cooking a new dish. And these are the kind of stereotypes, if you will, that the feminists hate. 
Yet these really weren't stereotypes. These were traditional roles of men and women that go back a billion, million, trillion years when we lived in rural farming society. Women didn't dare challenge the wisdom of a man. And a man was always trying to stay sharp. And like I said, the Andy Griffith show is a very good example of uh, what TV shows were like that talked about and showed men in charge and how, you know, men had to deal and endure with trials and tribulations to keep the peace, so to speak. Ponderosa, okay, Bonanza, that, that was a show that I grew up on and I watched that with my father about a man who uh, lived in the Western world with his sons. Father Knows Best was another television show, okay, uh, about a, a father, a wise man who's trying to uh, maintain his family and his community and basically be a manager, a human resource manager, if you will. The Brady Bunch was, of course, uh, a 1970s version of, I guess you could say, Father Knows Best. But there were many shows that the feminists hated. And these TV shows, of course, show men being in authority, fathers being in authority. And like I said, it is really epitomized by the Andy Griffith Show. If you watch the Andy Griffith Show, Mayberry RFD and all of that drama, you will get a really good understanding and appreciation of what the feminists hated in terms of men and fathers being in authority. Like I said, all hell is broke loose after 40 years of feminism because black women haven't charted a course for the black race, although she's had 40 years and she now controls billions of dollars, yet she remains clueless and she doesn't even have sense enough to support our men's movement. She would rather nag and fuss about the videos of the popular uh, YouTube uh, channel, Sergeant Willie P. So that proves that black women like drama, okay? Instead of saying, I support the men's movement, I'm ready to cooperate with the men's movement, she wants to argue and fuss about the videos by Sergeant Willie P. And as of today, Monday, May 4th, 2009, Sergeant Willie P. is now history, okay? His 15 minutes of fame is up because... He can't make any more videos because he, he, he gets kicked off of YouTube. So where are the hundreds of black women who now say, hey, I want strong black men to rise up. I'm willing to join, not join, but support the men's movement to support the church for men only. Obviously, you can't join a church for men only, yet you can support us with words of encouragement and inspiration. God is not to be mocked. He never has and never will. God knew what he was doing when he made men and when he made women. And when he made women soft and when he made men strong and hard. And a woman cannot just appreciate a man's hardness when he's in the bedroom giving it to her. Because in the bedroom, no woman wants a soft man. So let's keep it real. <laughs> okay? And just like you don't want a soft man in the bedroom, you shouldn't want a soft man outside of the bedroom. Yet, the feminists have taught you to compete with the black man, to compete, to conflict, and to contradict every edict that the black man comes up with. Like I've said before, when you do that against black men, you're doing that against your own sons. You let that white feminist Gloria Steinem in the 1970s tell you that a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Those were the epic words of Gloria Steinem. You don't believe me? Look it up. Those were, those were her words of, of fame, her infamous words. And those words summarize the mood and the attitude and the hostility of the feminist movement during the 1970s. 
The only reason feminism succeeded was because it was sponsored by corporate America. And they are doing the same thing to black women. They want to keep black women spending money. Or the strong black men who understand what I am saying, let me hear you say, amen. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, 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 to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the right to...